Zoom uh, from the uh, NSF uh, QLCI Center and the DOE uh, QSA Center. So uh, we start with uh, Torrance Tetina, uh, who will talk about uh, quantum simulation in chemistry. Yeah, all right, I'll get started. All right, so yeah, my name is Torrance Tetina. Um, I'm a new postdoc here uh, in the quantum pod. Um, so if this will work, <laughs> this happens. Okay, yeah, so yeah, I got my PhD in quantum chemistry at the University of Washington um, in June um, and just got here. And yeah, so I think it'd be good to start off first what quantum chemistry is, because I feel like some people might not be familiar. Um, so like the really basic picture, of course, is that we have molecules that are made up of electrons and nuclei. Electrons are small and they behave quantum mechanically and we can describe them with the wave function. Um, ideally, if we want to compute the wave function of all the electrons in some system, then we can compute properties that are of interest to us. Um, things like reaction energies, light matter interactions, the dynamics of molecules and materials, anything that we'd want to develop new materials and molecules. So the ultimate goal is, of course, to use simulations to accurately design you know, new medicines, photovoltaics, new sensors from the desired properties on the outset. Um, so that's the ultimate goal that we'd like to be able to do. Um, right. So again, if we can use the Coul Coulombic interaction to build up a Hamiltonian between the electrons and nuclei and optimize for some mean field, get a set of orbitals for some system, this is typically what's done in just standard quantum chemistry calculations. Um, but in order to build up the exact wave function, we then use the electrons in all of these orbitals that we got. Um, we need all, basically all uh, configurations of electrons in these orbitals. And this ends up being an exponentially scaling problem, um, which of course is intractable. Um, so like, for example, even just a tiny molecule methanol um, is, has upwards of 10 to the 17 configurations of electrons and of even just a medium or small size basis set. Um, so that's intractable with just six atoms. All right, so in general, what do quantum chemists do is create new polynomial scaling approximations to the exact wave function of interest um, that can be tractably solved with the goal of still capturing all the accuracy of the exact wave function um, in being able to predict uh, new properties of some arbitrary system. So um, in comes Hamiltonian simulation. If we had a, access to a quantum computer, we'd a, be able to provide an exponential speed up in that simulation. Typically what people look at is computing the exact ground state energies, uh, sometimes energy differences. And this is just a super basic overview, but we have some second quantized picture of the many body system. Typically this is in the form of uh, one body and two body operators. And we can sort of compile that down to some K local Hamiltonian on uh, a number of poly operators. And then with that create a unitary form of the propagator uh, to evolve it in time. So we prep some approximate guess to the exact wave function, evolve it in time, and then measure some property, let's say usually the energy. So with that, um, we can make the problem even more complicated. So one issue that comes up in quantum chemistry is that um, a lot of materials of interest actually contain um, heavy element atoms. And these aren't just, these aren't actually accurately described by just uh, the Coulombic Hamiltonian. So as you can see here, if we have uh, just, a, this is just the uranium atom um, on the left-hand column, these are the orbitals you get out from the regular um, uh, Coulombic Hamiltonian. And if you introduced special relativity and the fact that the speed of light is finite, um, then you get uh, two major effects. One of them being called, uh, typically referred to as scalar relativistic effects which actually provide an, a, a contraction or expansion of core orbitals, and then also uh, degenerate splittings called spin orbit coupling. So you can see with these heavy elements, um, these additional um, effects added into the Hamiltonian actually com, com, uh, comprise of a completely qualitatively different picture. Um, so the takeaway here is that the non-relativistic chemistry Hamiltonian itself is an approximation. 
Um, so what we need to do is to use the Dirac equation instead of the Schrodinger equation to um, accurately model systems that have heavy element containing atoms. And so, as you can see um, in this example here, this is a theoretical calculation done. Um, basically the takeaway is that for some uh, property of interest, in this case, it's the ionization potential, um, in order to get quantitative accuracy with experiment, we actually have to have both a, a very close description. So this is basically a, um, a method that is very expensive and closely approximates the exact wave function, but also includes relativistic effects up to the QED level. So um, basically the takeaway here is that since non-relativistic Hamiltonians are approximate, that actually puts a fundamental limit on the accuracy of quantum chemistry, regardless of whether you're using a classical or quantum computer. So one research question we had is, can we efficiently simulate a relativistic uh, chemical Hamiltonian at the level of effective QED on a quantum computer? And sort of the very short answer is, uh, yes, you can. And it's efficiently simulatable in polynomial time um, with uh, polynomial gate complexity. Um, essentially, the difference in this Hamiltonian is <laughs> that you have uh, non-particle number conserving terms and you only care about conserving charge. So essentially you add in not only a field of electrons, but a field of positrons as well. And you have to appropriately deal with that, but your Hamiltonian is still in a form uh, where you can get this uh, efficient calculation on a quantum computer. Typically what we looked at in this specific numerical, numerical case that we studied, studied was uh, for a second order Trotter Suzuki decomposition uh, using quantum phase estimation. Um, yeah, so just super quick overview. And yeah, this, this paper is still in preprint form. Uh, I just put the link in the top right corner, uh, but we actually uh, obviously did a lot more than just this, but yeah, check it out. With that, um, some future work um, is for that model, we just looked at a really simple elect relativistic electron gas. And what we want to do is look at more realistic basis sets and also more realistic uh, models that represent the problems we're interested in. Um, <laughs> one other thing that uh, would be interesting is also looking at a uh, first quantized representation instead of just second quantized. Um, but yeah, in general, some of my interests are, of course, relativistic effects in many body systems. Also, um, algorithms for including the quantum description of nuclear motion um, and vibrations in molecules, which are really important for uh, design of new materials. And um, also some hybrid quantum classical algorithms and um, also property prediction beyond just ground state energies. And uh, with that, I'd like to just put my acknowledgement slide. Of course, thank you to Simons Institute um, Umesh and Brigitte as well for having me here and my collaborators and my previous advisor. So with that, thank you very much. And so while we are changing over to Fermin, if there's a quick question. So would you, would you say that there's there's um, there's much more to do to go beyond this basic model that you use? Oh yeah, there's there's a lot more to do because this is very simple. And in fact, in this case, um, while we derive bounds that included um, nuclei, um, essentially just any nuclear center, uh, the numerical calculation we did could only include just basically just the relativistic electron gas, which means no nuclear centers. So obviously we need to do more on the numerical side, um, but at least this gives us an idea of how we can simulate uh, relativistic EQED type Hamiltonians in the future. Great. Mm -hmm. Okay, so next speaker is Fermi Ma, who will talk about post